Hey, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Society. In this episode, we're gonna go over the 3M Extract system. It's a dust extractor. We're gonna put it to the test here in the home garage. We're gonna see how well it works for auto body and sanding down that primer and old paint and see if it's a good system that you can use at your home shop or even in the body shop. So I went out and I purchased the 3M Extract. It was a little bit over $800. Now, one of the main reasons why I liked it and was an attractive buy to me is because the actual sander itself was extracted. It all had the same branding on it. So I know I would have no issues when it comes to actually using the hose and all the tools. And I was just about to buy the Fest tool, but there was just, again, too many options and too many variables of what tools work, would they not, you have to buy an adapter. And that's something I didn't wanna deal with. So we ended up again getting the 3M extract and let's go ahead and check out some of the features as we get started here and use them in our home garage. So right off the bat, what I do like is that locking capabilities right there so it doesn't slide off of my table. Now, so what you'll have over here is you can use this for an electric sander or if you want to use air, you would use these ports right in here. So if you have an air sander hooked up to a compressor, you can still use that right here. Now, I don't want to run my compressor too much, so we'll get into the 3M extract sander in just a little bit that I also purchased with this system. Now, this actual system has two options as far as the dust collection. Now, that first option is almost something like a garbage bag. Now, you can reuse these, empty them out. They are a little bit expensive. They also have a fleece option that probably work a little bit better. Now, we'll also learn a little bit more about these dials. Now, this actually has an auto clean system on it, which I really like. So every once in a while it'll come on, it'll make a noise and it'll clean the components inside so it doesn't get clogged up. On the front end here, it has the electrical port, which we'll be using for our electrical sander as well. Now we'll also get into using our switch and putting on the appropriate settings so that when we turn on our sander, the actual unit comes on and it's not continuously running when we don't want it to. One thing it doesn't have, and I looked into the reviews and I wasn't too crazy about it not having as well, is it doesn't have one of the hooks to hook this or ravel it around. I like to keep all my tools nice, clean, and organized. And although not a deal breaker, it just doesn't have it. Now it is HEPA filter certified, so if that's something you'll need on your job site, you are good to go as far as that is concerned. As far as the wheels are concerned, you have about a six inch wheel there. As far as the front, you have the swivel wheels so you can lock as well if you need it to roll around the shop. On the back side, it looks like it has some sort of uh, storage, maybe for some more hose or something of that sort. But again, there's no way to actually uh, coil up that hose on top of the unit. Now to open it up, it's very simple. You have these snapping handles on the side. They'll just snap open and on this side as well. And then it's just completely removable. Now when it comes to putting the bag in, it just fits in and there's not a whole lot of style points here because it's actually going to overhang once it's all installed correctly. It's in there snug now. Now this simply just overlaps. And again, the fleece bag option is a much better option than what we have here. And we do have it on order and we'll be testing it out and reviewing that in the future as well. Now we can place our top back on, snap it back in. Now let's take a look at the filters. It just opens up right here. You'll push it in and that will reveal the filter compartment. And all you gotta do is open it up just like that. And the cool thing about it is it's even got a little kickstand right here to keep it open. Cool little feature. Now it comes with two filters and they simply slide just right up. And whenever you need them, you can vacuum it out. Now I hear the fleece bag once again, it works a little bit better to keep these cleaner. So also keep that in mind too, when it comes to purchasing a unit and seeing what's best for you. When you're done, you can go ahead and flip this back up, close it, snap that in and you're good to go. At this point, we're ready to connect our hose. And the cool thing about this hose is an anti-static hose. So you don't have to worry about getting shocked while you're working. And it seems to be a good 15 feet of hose so you don't have to have the dust extractor right next to you. Now most likely what I'll be doing when I use this unit is just using the coil electrical. That way I don't have to wind it and wind it back up every single time. 
And I did find that this little handle props right up and acts as a good holder for the electrical cord. Now to get this to fit that, all you gotta do is unwind this adapter from the hose and this side has a swivel adapter on it and it will just screw right on. There we go, we're nice and tight now. Now let's take a look at those settings here. Now first off we have off, okay? Now it means it's not gonna be coming on now. The second setting would be completely on without auto clean. Okay. Now the third setting is going to be completely on with auto clean. Now the auto clean will clean one filter and then it will clean the other filter and it could be an alarming sound. Let's go ahead and turn it on. Now the auto clean system will always come on initially when you first go to that setting. Now for me, I'm going to be using the auto clean with the auto function, meaning that it's only going to come on once it senses electricity from the toggle switch at the top here. Now it will be off until I go ahead and use my sander. Once I press down on this button, the vacuum will come on. Once I stop, after a few moments, it will go off by itself. I like this setting so it's not always running. I ended up adding these hose rings to keep the electrical cord attached to the hose. Now I only had three, but I ended up wrapping it around itself so it'll stay very contained. Nice little feature to have. Now we're all set up. Now if you purchase this unit, it's gonna push you towards the Cubitron sandpaper, which is a mesh style sandpaper. It's a net abrasive. When they made this product, it was made for woodworking and automotive to work as a paper across the board. The only issue with this is it's gonna be a little bit more aggressive of a scratch. So if we're running the same grit, let's say, we might leave too coarse of a scratch. What I would recommend better for you, which still has the same longevity, is a paper like this. This is made out of aluminum oxide. It's a little bit better for auto body. It's gonna leave a finer scratch. And this is what we're gonna be using in the garage. It's got the holes for the vacuum system, which will work just fine with the 3M system. And well, also it's a little bit better value for you guys at home. You get a little bit more in the box and a little bit cheaper. So we'll go ahead and we'll put this onto our sander and we'll see how well it sands down our C5 hood. Now we're gonna take this portion of our C5 hood and we're gonna use the sander. Now the sander has a few different settings on it. As far as settings, what we mean is the actual variable speed. You can have it very low and it will put a limit on how fast it will actual sand when you push down the trigger. Or let's say midway, a little bit faster. And of course you can go all the way as well. And that will be at the, at the highest speed. I like to keep it in and around the third or fourth button or light here on the actual unit itself and that will give us a good speed and that doesn't mean as soon as we press down the button it's going to be at that speed we can also kind of trigger it a little bit to get that variation or that speed that we want now we'll go ahead and put our sandpaper onto our pad and we're good to go Now we can see all the dust that it makes when we don't have the extractor unit on. Now let's turn it on. Well, so far so good. You can see I don't really have any dust in the air and we're sanding cleanly now. When we sand cleaner, that means that we're gonna have a nicer surface for our sandpaper to do its job. Imagine a surface that has dust everywhere. The sandpaper's not gonna be able to do its job just right. That's exactly what we're getting. Let's go ahead and finish this hood up. Now that made fast and clean work of the actual hood itself. Now this is a 2K primer, so it does powder up quite a bit. Now you still find that there's gonna be 
obviously some residual primer dust on the actual panel itself, but that's normal. There's not a lot of dust all over the place. And if you saw earlier when we didn't turn the vacuum on, there was just dust completely everywhere. So now we're gonna move on to the sanding blocks. Now we have a little bit of a dilemma here. Now these three M blocks really work well with the Fest tool. And I was hoping for a little bit better of a system with the extract as far as the compatibility. So I had to change things around just a little bit. You can see how this fits very, very firm on there. And so that's exactly what I would want, but they don't come like that. So I kind of did a little research and I found that the actual hose comes with the Fest tool. Um, and this is not exactly something that I can adapt right now to my extract system. So all I did is get some handy electrical tape and I stiffened up this connection right here. And now we have a nice firm connection between hose adapter and the actual block itself. Now, as far as the longevity is concerned, I'm not 100% sure. We'll just have to see and wait. But right now we have a nice solid connection. Also, I'm interested to see if this really bothers me and it gets in the way when I'm sanding, but that was something we'll have to look into as time goes by. But for now, this works. Now, a little minor dilemma as well is that every time we wanna go ahead and use our block for sanding, we'll obviously have to disconnect this adapter from the hose. We'll have to take off one of our hose rings just to get ourselves a little more slack on the hose. Then I'll have to go back and screw this guy on and now we're good to go. So just a little bit of an added step. I'm not sure how much it bothers me at the moment, but looking for answers. And if you guys happen to know, I'll leave a comment so we can go ahead and get this thing a little bit more easy to use. We'll go ahead and fix some sandpaper on here and we'll do a little blocking. Now we have our Eagle Abrasives P180 and this has the holes in it for the vacuum system as well. Now we have Adam C5 Corvette fender here and it's got a little bit of a crack and it's got some little waves here and there. So we're gonna sand down this area using our block and we're gonna see how well it does. And you know, eventually we'll fix this crack and do some light filler work over this portion. But let's break out the block and see how well it works. And if we can keep some dust off the ground, well, that's what we're looking for. Now that worked a lot better than I expected. I got zero dust on the ground. And one thing I did learn is that this volume control is very important. This red light was going off it's because I had it turned down way too low. This red light indicates that the bag is full. And I know the bag's not full because I just started working with it. So I went ahead and turned this one up and the light went right out and I got a lot better suction. So what we're gonna do now after our test panel's done here is we're gonna take Adam's Corvette bumper and we're gonna do a little bit more sanding with the block and back with the DA sandpaper with a little bit more aggressive 180 and see how well it works. So we'll go ahead and get it powered up. This piece of sandpaper will last a long time so we can still use it here on the top. Surprisingly enough, my little hack really works well. Because here we're on 180, it's really sanding out nice. There might be a little bit of low spots, but uh, that's because it's an SMC composite material. It will never be 100% completely flat when you block it out. Let's go ahead and use our DA sander on the other side and see if we can make even faster work out of this. We have it set up to about four now. It's a little bit faster and it's gonna cut it down a little bit quicker. I'm interested to see how 180 grit reacts with our sander and our vacuum and we'll see if it can pull it up fast enough.
Now this is some pretty decent road rash and I would never suggest going down to 80 grit. So we're gonna start off with 180 and see how well that works out and see if we can smooth it out enough to put a skin coat of filler on it. We can see it made quick work out of this area. Still a little bit low here, but it will require just a little bit of fill to build that surface back up. But it really made quick, easy work. Now look at the sandpaper. If that's any sort of clue as to how well this works, there's no buildup or clogging here. It's all gone through the holes and, well, there's nothing really to talk about on the ground either, which is a good thing. Oh, I gotta say today it made quick work out of our project. Now, I'm not telling you to go buy a $800 extraction system, but if you do, you're gonna be happy with what you bought. Now, I was just a little bit disappointed only with the connection here on the 3M block. I thought really it would all come together, but we adapted and we made it work. Now, as far as where we go with this system, we're gonna to continue to use it in the home garage. I wanna keep my floors clean and I wanna make sure that I'm not breathing in any dust. And I, I didn't wear a mask today, but you should always wear a mask when you're doing any sort of sanding, but I kind of want to give a feel if, if this was really doing a good job and what would have been in our lungs or on the ground, that's what we got. A good amount of dust in the bag all the way to the bottom of it and our filters are pretty clogged up as well. So we know that it's sucking out pretty well. Well, that will wrap things up for this video and I hope this really helped you guys get a better insight as far as, well, if dust distraction is for you. Now guys, this is Brian from Paint Society reminding you, don't overthink it, it's just paint. I'll see you guys on the next episode.